Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. Um, I'm so happy that the weather has finally started to get just a little bit milder. Perfect timing as well, as on Monday, the government announced that they're easing some of the lockdown restrictions. So soon we'll be able to go for brunch and picnics, and soon we'll be able to turn up, hey! <laughs> um, anyway, I'm excited to be allowed back outside again. Um, do let me know in the comment section what you're planning on getting up to. Um, so I mentioned in my last video that I'm going to offer some health and fitness tips on my channel and with the 21st of June touted as the date that the club will reopen again, there's no better time to start getting fit and ready for when we're allowed out. I can't actually remember the last time we ended up out out. So in today's video, I'll be offering some tips on how to stay motivated and organize your workout routine. Following that, I'll do a quick rundown on some of the apps that can help you achieve your fitness goals. So let's get into it. So the first tip is to start prioritizing your workouts. I think the best way to incorporate exercise and fitness into your routine is to ensure that it takes precedent before anything else in your schedule. Now, I do understand how difficult that can be um, as people, as people have so many non-negotiable responsibilities like work or childcare. However, if you are able to commit uh, more time to exercise, then ensure you are allocating enough time in your day to get it done. One workaround is to exercise first thing in the morning, which is what I do. That way you're getting the hardest task out of the way. Other pros are that you're feeling energised and refreshed in the morning as well. So the next tip links in with the last one and that is to plan ahead. I usually have a rough idea of my workout schedule for the following week um, by the weekend. So that way I can ensure I'm allocating enough time for my workouts. Plus, I'm not surprised or annoyed when I wake up in the morning and I've got to work out again. Plus, I'm choosing routines that coincide with my goals for that week. If you've got your life together and you keep a diary or a planner, schedule in your workout time. Or alternatively, just set a reminder on your phone. If you're trying to get into running, another helpful tip is to prep for your run the evening before. You can do this by laying out your workout clothes so you're not faffing about in the morning looking for what you're going to wear. You can charge your phone and your earphones. And also, you should also try to wake up around 15 to 20 minutes before your run so you have time to get ready and stretch. Then you'll be out of the door on time. If you're new to running, the night before is the best time to plan your route and set up a playlist and check the weather as well. Um, I usually try to finish my run by a supermarket. That way I've completed two tasks back to back. It's also helpful to create a music playlist in advance and I usually use music to track my distance as well. You can also create workout playlists on YouTube. Um, the only annoying part is when you're in the middle of a move and then all of a sudden an uh, advert comes on. So that's also something to consider when using workout, um, using YouTube to do your workouts. So tip number three is to invest in your equipment. And I'm not going to lie, I kind of need to take my own advice. Um, because the state of my running shoes, yeah. <laughs> They're bash up. Um, but I do have these buff Nike uh, flight knit reacts in mint green. Um, they're more to wear in the gym um, than anywhere else as I don't want them to get dirty but they are really comfortable so I might do a review on them at some point if um, yeah you'll be in if any of you will be interested in that um, however you might be feeling discomfort when you run and that might be because you're not wearing the appropriate footwear and also if you are struggling to get into running you need to make sure that your running accessories are up to scratch as well um, you might find it useful to have some wireless earphones. You could also get an armband so you're not holding your phone while you run. Um, I do know that Poundland sell them as well, so definitely um, check out your Poundland and see if they have any. Um, and for home workouts, try and get a yoga mat, resistance bands, dumbbells, and any other equipment um, necessary for you to complete your workout. When I say invest, don't panic. Um, you don't have to spend a lot, of, a lot of money to get into fitness. I know that workout gear can be pretty expensive, but I do think that home workouts are a cost-effective way to get um, fit with just your body weight and a mat. And sometimes not even a mat, um, just you, yourself is completely fine. <laughs> so my final tip is to learn how to compromise. Um, you've got to start being honest with yourself. No, seriously, I do this as well sometimes. I tell myself that I'm going to do this and I'm gonna do that and I'll create this whole elaborate plan in my head. And then when the time actually comes to 
do it, what have I done? That's the difference between me and you. Because while you were sitting around, waiting, doing niche, I was out making moves. Nish, nothing. <laughs> so what you need to do is get out of that cycle. I know there are days where you really, really, really can't be bothered and that's okay. We all get those days. But if you are serious about staying motivated, you do have to be willing to compromise. So for example, if that 30 minute run that you plan to do sounds like a marathon right now, okay, just try and do 15 minutes instead. Um, you can't commit to your full upper body workout today. Okay, try and do a five minute HIIT workout instead. I try and frame this process by saying, if I can't do this, I have to do that. Honestly, I think it's better to do um, just a little than nothing at all. And once you've started the workout, you're more than likely to finish it anyway. So that's all the tips I have for you today. And by now, I bet you're thinking, well, this is all well and good, but how am I meant to prioritize, plan, invest and compromise? Are there some apps that will help me do all of that? Don't worry, I got you. So I'm going to use the next couple of minutes to summarize my three apps that help me with my fitness goals. So do stay tuned to find out what they are. So the first app I use is my Fitness Pal, which is free on both Apple and Android. There is a premium version, but the free version, which is what I use, offers really useful features that I'll share with you today. So my fitness power is essentially a food diary. It allows you to set weight loss goals. You can calorie count on it and you can also discover new recipes. And the app also lets you input your food intake as well. So when you set a weight goal, once you've completed your food diary for the day, it generates a five week projection of your weight based on your food intake on that specific day. Um, I really like the app as it syncs with other apps that I use so I don't have to update my exercises manually. So the second app that I use is RunKeeper. Again, it's available on both Apple and Android devices. So I've been running for around six years now and RunKeeper is the only app that I use to track my runs. It's pretty straightforward. You're able to set your running goals such as weight loss or training for a marathon. Um, the app will help you develop a training plan based on your specific goals. Some of the features are premium, but most of the features are free. Um, you're able to change the exercises to include interval running and there's a lot of other <clears throat> exercises you can input into the app as well. Um, the app automatically syncs to my fitness power, which I do find pretty cool as well. So the final app that I'm going to recommend is Fitbod, um, which is also available on Apple and Android. However, unlike my fitness power and run keeper, which I've used for a significant amount of time, um, I only discovered Fitbod over the summer last year. And I think it was around the time I started going to the gym. Um, also, unfortunately, the app is not free, um, but I thought I'd include it anyway, as I'm not going to lie, as someone who was and still is a novice at weightlifting, the app um, helped me discover new exercises and start to inco incorporate weightlifting into my routine. Um, the app does offer free passes and, and I think it will let you do three workouts, I think, before requiring um, any payment. So, Fitbod is essentially your personal trainer. The app lets you input your fitness goals and will develop a workout plan to help you meet them. What I really like about it is that you're able to tell the app what equipment your gym has. I know, just a disclaimer, I know that gyms are closed, but come April, you'll thank me. Anyway, so once those features are saved, it will only develop workouts using the equipment available. As you progress, Fitbod increases the intensity of the workouts by increasing the weights or the number of reps. The app usually generates workouts um, based on different muscle groups. For each exercise, there are video tutorials showing you how to do the maneuver as well. Plus, they send weekly workout reports to your email, which I think is a cool way to see your progression each week. So those are the apps that I use. Let me know in the comment section which ones you're familiar, if you're familiar with any of them, or which ones you're going to try out. Um, I hope some of the tips mentioned um, help motivate you all to try out something new and get fit so we can all be looking good and fine by the 21st of June. As usual, please continue to social distance, wear your mask and wash your hands. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a like and more importantly, don't forget to subscribe. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. You take care now. Bye.